and welcome to the Profit Builder webinar. I am super excited that you are here today joining with us and that you want to learn more about Profit First and to really make that a priority in your business. My name is Carrie Postal. I have the privilege of being the owner and founder of Abacus Business Solutions. And we help our clients to know, understand, and trust their numbers. And we help them to also implement Profit First into their business as well. So let's jump straight in. I know your time is valuable. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Kelly, give me a thumbs up if that's shared okay. Yep. Okay. We're good. Okay. So, uh, like I said, I am the owner and founder of Abacus Business Solutions. We have been in business for uh, just over 10 years. Uh, we have a team of six working. And like I said, we're working with over uh, 60 different clients right now, helping them to know, understand, and trust their numbers. So, let's talk about your business. So, you started a business. It was something that you decided maybe pretty quickly. Maybe you decided over a period of time that this was the direction that you wanted to go. This is what the next step was going to be on your journey. Maybe you had people say to you like, hey, own a business. It'll be fun. It'll be real easy. Just jump in. Just get it done. It'll be great. Maybe some people said you'll be an overnight success. And what's one of those things when you start a business, sometimes everything goes really well and it's great. Then maybe you hit a few bumps in the road. Other times you start your business and you just feel that like, you know, you're just hitting your roadblock after roadblock and you're stumbling, you're trying to make a profit. Maybe you've got revenue coming in and you just don't feel that your business is where it wants to be. But now I want you to think about why you started that business. Like, what was the reason for that? Was it personal freedom? You're having that time to work when you wanted to, to be able to, you know, choose those hours, to be able to not be stuck in a nine to five job. Maybe it was financial freedom. Maybe you wanted to be in charge of what your income is and not having somebody dictating to you what your, um, your salary is going to be. So you may have lots of different reasons. And I know as a business owner, having been there myself, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and early starts and late nights that go into that business owner, into running that business. There's a lot of stress, there's worry, there's uncertainty. There's a lot going on. And so then when it comes down to it, you know, it's like, yeah, I want to make a profit. That's, you know, one of the important things. That's why you started your business, right? I know that's why I started my business. I wanted to make a profit. I certainly did not start my business, you know, thinking, oh, if I make a loss, it's okay. Not at all. I made, started my business to be profitable. And in the 10 years of owning Abacus, I haven't had one client that's come on board saying, I just want to make a loss. Now, I have had some people say like, well, I don't want to make too much profit because I don't want to have to pay taxes. And that conversation has actually come up more than once. And so that I say like, well, one, you want to be profitable because you started this business. You don't want to be plowing money back into it. And then I say, it's okay to pay taxes. Now, sometimes I get a funny look when I say that, but I'm like, it's true. It is okay to pay taxes. Paying taxes on your profit is a good thing. Paying taxes is a good thing because it means you're making profit, okay? The difference is having the tax money, having the money saved to pay those taxes when they're due. That's the key difference. And that's where, you know, Profit First can help you as well. But let's think about it. Why is profit the last thing that people think of? Think about your profit and loss report. Where does that appear on your um, income statement? Look down all the way to the bottom. There's your profit at the very bottom. Got your revenue at the top, got all your expenses. And the very last thing is your profit. It shouldn't be what is left over. Profit should not be like, oh, fingers crossed. I hope I'm profitable this month. I hope I'm profitable by the end of the year. It shouldn't be like that. It should be a focus. You know, you don't want to run your business based on what is left over. So another issue that comes into play a lot is cash flow. What comes to mind when you think about cash flow? You know, type in the, the chat box, like, what words come to mind when you're thinking about chat, your cash flow? What is it that you know, springs into your head when that comes up in conversation? So I've got a few ideas here. So overdraft, maybe that is something that comes into your head when you're thinking about you know, cash flow, whether it's your own cash flow or cash flow in general. Maybe you're living check to check as a business. You hear people living check to check in their personal life, but maybe you're living check to check in your business as well. 
maybe you're worrying about how you pay rent. Maybe you know, think about cash flow, you're thinking about rent. Maybe you're thinking about chasing your customers for payment. Maybe you know your accounts receivable is building up and up, and you find that you're chasing customers all the time, trying to get paid so that you can then pay your bills. Are you paying yourself? A lot of business owners start a business, paying their team as they grow, and don't pay themselves for a really long time. And to me, that's crazy because you started this business for financial freedom. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself not being able to pay yourself because you're taking care of everybody else. So it's really important that you are able to pay yourself and Profit First can help you. Line of credit, maybe that's another thing that comes to mind when you think about uh, uh, cash flow. Maybe that's something else that you're in the back of your mind thinking, okay, I'm going to have to go apply for a line of credit if you know, I don't get paid or if I don't pick up more work. Payroll, that's something that a lot of business owners stress about every you know, week or every two weeks as to can they make payroll that, for that period? Credit card, maybe you're using your credit card you know, over and over consistently increasing that balance every month, but not able to pay it down because you've got cash flow problems. So there's lots of different things that could come to mind when you think about the word cash flow. But I wanna introduce you to a new way of thinking. It's a new way to think about your cash flow. And that of course is profit first. Profit first is a game changer for your business. I have had profit first in my business now for about seven years. And the difference and the impact it's made on my business is huge. And the client stories that I hear from our clients that have also implemented it in their business is amazing as well. It's life-changing for them. And it's just so exciting to hear their stories, hear, you know, see the look on their face when they see how you know, Profit First really has changed the way that their business operates. So let's jump straight in. Okay, so first we're going to talk about axioms, you know, a story of addiction. So when you think about it, if you keep doing, thinking the same way, keep doing the same things, you're gonna get the same results. If you don't change anything, then nothing's gonna change. I remember that I used to have a pastor that would say, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And I remember thinking about that. I'm like, what does it mean? If nothing changes, nothing changes. And I'm like, wow, that's, like, that's really powerful that you, know, you can't keep doing the same thing and think you're gonna get a different result you're going to get the same results if you don't change something. So I wanted to give you a statistic here as well, because I think it's, it's pretty scary. 83% um, of businesses under $25 million of revenue per year are surviving check to check. That's a pretty scary statistic right there. And that is something that we want to try and help change. You know, if you are familiar with Mike McCarowitz and his books, you know that he is on a mission to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. And that is to help businesses not run their business check to check. Okay, so we're going to start doing things differently. We want something different to come out at the end of it. We have to do it different in the first place. So how can we do that? So the problem is we're using a broken formula. If you think about back to those days when you started looking at your business or you talk to other business owners, it's all about sales minus expenses equals profit, right? That is what everybody is being taught. That is what you know, you're, you're, you're taught to, you know, when you're looking at your profit loss, sales minus expenses equals your profit. The accounting aspect of that alone focuses on the numbers, but it ignores the human behavior around those numbers. And that is what uh, Profit First can help you with. So I'm gonna give you a choice as to, of two companies. So which company would you prefer to own? You've got company A, where they have a revenue of $50 million, or you have company B with a revenue of 5 million. So if, uh, on the chat box, type A or B, would you prefer to own company A with 50 million in revenue, or would you prefer to own company B with $5 million in revenue? A, right, Martin? I would absolutely own A as well. I would love a company with $50 million a year. I think that would be amazing. But now look at those numbers. Now, which company do you want to own? It was a little bit of a trick question. Do you want a $50 million company with $150,000 in net profit or $5 million with $500,000 in net profit? That is what is the most important thing to be looking at is your net profit. So now, Martin, I'm thinking like, yeah, I'll probably take company B now. Now that I have the big picture, I'll take a $5 million company with a net profit of 500,000. You have to have the big picture as to exactly what does, you know, what does that revenue mean when it comes to the bottom line? 
everybody is so focused on their revenue. You know, if you think about people when they go to meetings, yeah, we did 10 million last year. Yeah, we just hit you know, 5 million this year. Whatever it might, that number might be, people love to brag about their revenue. But they're not talking about their net profit number. They may have done $10 million, great, well done, but they may have made a loss of 300,000. You don't know that because nobody's talking about their profit all the losses, because no one's going to go in there and brag about losing $300,000 last year. Everybody focuses on revenue when really we need to be looking at that profit. That is the most important part. So if you've read the book Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, which is, you know, um, you know, I myself am a profit first professional with his organization, because profit first is something that I believe is a true game changer for your business. So Mike talks about in the book uh, how he had very successful businesses, sold businesses, started new businesses, sold them. And he was a millionaire and he you know, was very successful, went out, bought three, four, five cars, had a nice house, nice vacations, and ended up losing every single penny. And that is how Profit First was born from Mike going through this experience. Like, he is, like, I can grow companies, I build companies, and I sell companies. And then I'm losing them and then I'm starting them again. And it's just like this vicious cycle as to me, what can he be doing different in his businesses? So Mike uh, had a very rough time, obviously, when he lost all that money and you know, went bankrupt, having to tell his family, it was February the 14th, it was Valentine's Day dinner. And he was telling his family that he had just lost everything and they were about to lose the house. Can you imagine, just when you picture yourself sitting at the dinner table, having to tell your nine-year-old that you just lost everything? And he, uh, Mike has three kids, and it was his nine-year-old daughter that ran to her bedroom, which at the time he thought, yeah, I'd run off as, as well if I had to. And then, but she comes running back with her piggy bank. And she's like, hey, daddy, will this help? And that story, even now, I've just got goosebumps just thinking about that story because I think it's so powerful. And so Mike then became determined to get on a mission like, okay, let's help these businesses to succeed. What can he do? He became an angel investor as well at the time when he got all this money. And those businesses, you know, didn't work out, except I think there was one that did. And he's like, there's got to be something different. So obviously, as you can imagine him going through this scenario, um, you know, he was not able to sleep at night. You know, he was up late watching all those infomercials and the different shows that came on gave him this idea. And that's what, where Profit First was born. That's where it was created. And one of the things that I love about Mike with his books, he doesn't just come up with an idea, write it down, publish the book and sell it. He does at least a year or two of research on all of his books that he's written. He does the same thing. And so he researched his, his theory, his idea of Profit First and see if it would work and to see then where his numbers fall in. And that's how Profit First was born. So let's dig into Profit First. This is gonna give you a really great foundation as to how Profit First can help your business. So we're gonna talk about being fit. We're gonna talk about plates, veggies, temptation, and frequency. Yeah, I'm sure that when you came into this Profit First webinar, you were not expecting to be able to talk, uh, to be able to you know, be listening to this kind of thing. But believe me, this is how Profit First came about. So we're gonna talk about small plates. We're gonna talk about serving sequentially, removing the temptation and rhythm. So first of all, let's talk about small plates. So if you want to lose weight, what do they say? They say eat less, right? But it's really hard to eat less if you've got a huge dinner plate and you have this tiny little bit of food in the middle. It doesn't feel very good, does it? So if you fill a smaller plate with the same amount of food, it feels a whole lot better. So it all comes about perspective. And then this is where having small plates represent then your different bank accounts. So Mike recommends different bank accounts to be set up that have different purposes. And so that way, rather than having all your food on one plate, you're going to have all your money in one bank account, you're going to spread it around. So you're going to have smaller balances, but in several bank accounts. And we'll explain more of that in just a moment. But I want to go back to the human behavior aspect. So this is something I mentioned earlier, that accounting that formula, that sales minus expenses equals profit, is all based on numbers and accounting. But let's talk about human behavior. There's a law called Parkinson's law, and it states our demand upon a resource tends to expand to match the supply of that resource. I'm going to say that again. Our demand upon a resource tends to expand to match the supply of that resource. So I want you to think about if somebody gives you a project and they say, hey, you've got one week to do this project. You're going to get it done in one week. 
But if somebody gives you that same project and says, hey, you've got eight weeks to do that. I don't need that till the end of August. You want to take two weeks, you know, 10 weeks to do the project. You're going to get started maybe the week before it's due and get it done. So even though it's the same project that's going to take the same amount of time, you're going to you know, put it off because you've been given more time to do that. So you're probably wondering why I have a picture of a toothbrush and toothpaste on the screen. So that is another way to look at this as well. And I love this example that Mike gave, gives in the book. So if you can imagine, it's Friday night. Tonight, 10 p.m., you're brushing your teeth and you're down to the last little bit of toothpaste in your tube. And you put it onto your toothbrush, put it under the water, force it, and the pressure of that water knocks that last bit of toothpaste right off into the sink. Sitting there in the bottom of the sink, you know, the sink that you're going to clean tomorrow because it's, it's the weekend. And you look at your toothbrush, toothpaste, there's none left, but you've got to brush your teeth. And so then you're trying to figure out what you're going to do. And it's like, you know what? I don't have any choice. You're going to take that toothbrush and you're going to scrape that toothpaste off that dirty bacterial ridden sink. And then you're going to continue to brush your teeth, right? You've all been there. I know you have. But let's think about it like this. If you had another brand new tube of toothpaste in the cabinet and that same thing happened, toothpaste falls into the sink, but you know you've got a new tube here, you're just going to turn on the water faucet. You're going to wash that toothpaste down into the sink going to grab the new tube and put on a nice new line of toothpaste onto your toothbrush. So that is an example of Parkinson's thought. You had the resources there, so you are going to use them. And so that is what, that when we're talking about human behavior, Mike leverages human behavior when it comes to profit first. So you're probably thinking like, how does this all relate to my business? What's toothpaste got to do with my business? So this is where we are now talking about having the plates. And these are our plates starting with a serving tray of our income account. So these are our five bank accounts that Mike recommends having. You have income, profit, owner's pay, tax, and operating expenses. And they are in that order for a reason. That's not just a random order that I put onto the screen. They are there for a particular purpose. So income account, that is where all your revenue, all your deposits are going to come into that bank account. And we're gonna label it income. I'm gonna look at that as being the serving tray. So all the, the money comes in there. And then we're gonna allocate that income into these four other bank accounts. And we're gonna do it in this order. Profit, because what's the book talk, called that we're talking about? Profit first. So we're gonna put our profit percentage there first. Owners pay, because you are the most important employee in your business. And then tax, because you know Uncle Sam always wants the money when it's due. And then our operating expenses. So rather than looking at our profit being the last thing, the expenses are the last thing, because it's what's left. What do we have there to be able to do? You know, um, use to operate our business. So these percentages are going to be based um, on a table that Mike publishes in the book. And this is one of the tables that came out of his research, uh, looking at the different sizes of companies and where the percentages are based on um, their revenue, profit, owners pay tax and operating expenses. So if we look at column A here, so if the business is doing between zero and $250,000 of revenue per year, we're going to look at that real revenue as being 100%. Real revenue is the number that we are going to use to calculate everything else. And what we mean by that is, for example, if you're in construction, you've got materials that you are purchasing and you have subcontractors that you are paying. And really, you're just kind of a pass through entity for that, uh, those payments. So you get paid by your client and then you're paying your materials and then you're paying your subs. So you're just kind of the vessel, if you like, for paying out those um, vendors. So when we're talking about real revenue, if you're in construction, you're going to take off the payments you make to your materials and the payments you make to your subcontractors off your total revenue to get your real revenue number. So let's look at that being, that's your 100%. So then you're gonna put 5% into your profit account. You're gonna put 50% into your owner's pay, 15% into tax cam, and then the remaining 30% goes to operating expenses. So as you can see, as your business gets bigger in revenue, the profit goes up as well. The owner's pay goes down because as the business gets bigger, you're going to be stepping further and further away from that business on the day-to-day -day operations. But don't forget, you've still got 20% profit coming here on the, the profit side of things. Tax stays at 15% and the operating expenses increase as well. Now, these are not set in stone. This is not a case of like, hey, if you don't do it this way, it doesn't work. There's flexibility in the numbers, but it's looking at the proportion of those numbers to each other that is giving us a guide that is helping us to determine where we should be. 
Okay, so let's now talk about veggies. We talked about small plates. So now we're gonna talk about veggies. So now we're talking about the sequence of things. So I want you to look at these first list of uh, words on the left-hand side, the description of a person. If they're intelligent, industrious, impulsive, critical, stubborn, and envious. So when you hear a list like that, they sound like a pretty good person. They're intelligent and industrious. And then if you look at the other line, that this person's envious, stubborn, critical, impulsive, industrious, and intelligent. So during the study, people rated the person on the left-hand side more positively. But if you look at the list of words there, they're exactly the same words, they're just in a reverse order. So this is what we're talking about sequences. That's why that is really, really important. So then now let's talk again about the behavior of you as a human, as us all. Let's talk about bank balance accounting. Now I'm sure that you all have your cell phone right there, okay? I'm sure it's not far from you. It's probably sitting on the desk next to you. It's probably at least in the same room that you are sitting right now. So as a business owner, and probably even as an individual, if you're not a business owner yet, you have this ability now to check your bank balance as many times a day as you want to. If you think about years ago, before we had all this technology and online banking, you would wait until the end of the month to get your bank statement. You'd be keeping it, you know, your checkbook and checking, you're know, writing down all your deposits and your expenses to see how much you have in your bank account. But technology has now allowed us to be able to just check our bank balance as many times a day as we want to. And so when you're doing that, you know, you're kind of, you're looking at your bank, um, your business checking account and you say, oh, awesome, I've got $50,000 in that. And then there's this temptation to then like, oh, well, I could do this. I could go buy that. But since I said her computer was slow, oh, you know what? That truck just came on sale down the road. You start thinking about all these ways of spending money because you're seeing this $50,000 in the bank account. But maybe what you're not seeing is the $10,000 check to a vendor that didn't clear yet. The fact that you have rent due next month, next week. The fact you have payroll due next week. The fact you have other vendors due next week. That really, you don't have $50,000 in there then you have to pay yourself as well. Oh, and then you didn't pay any, save money for taxes. So just having that one bank account where everything is lumped together is really, really deceptive. And when you keep checking that bank balance throughout the day, you just end up thinking about ways to be able to spend that because you keep thinking that, okay, great, I've got $50,000 in the bank account. But this is where we need to be really allocating the money. We need to be able to tell the money what's its purpose for. So instead of having that one bank account where all the money sits in, you're now gonna give every single dollar in that account a purpose. Every single dollar in your business has a role to play. And so the first one is the profit, like we said, it is pay, tax, operating expenses. And there are also other bank accounts as well. So personally, I have, I think I'm up to like 10 or 11 bank accounts now. And I'm with Relay Financial. Uh, I don't pay any monthly fees on my bank accounts. I don't have to do a minimum number of debit transactions. I don't have to keep a minimum balance. It makes it really easy to do profit first with Relay because it's set up and they're actually our official partner bank as well. So if you decide that you need other bank accounts, here are some examples. So you might need a payroll bank account. So if you have a team like I do, I make sure that there is money into that payroll account at the beginning of the month when our revenue comes in and that there's enough money in that payroll account then to pay my team the rest of the month. That is an amazing feeling knowing that that money is just set there. If you're a company that has sales tax, sales tax is another really important bank account to have. So when that income comes in, when you know how much of that revenue is you know, for sales tax, just move that straight into your sales tax before you do any of the other allocations because that money is not yours. You've collected that on behalf of the Department of Revenue and they want their money, they want it on time. So just put that into a separate bank account and call that for sales tax. And there's other uh, bank accounts you may have as well. Maybe you're having to replace equipment on a regular basis. Maybe there's a new piece of machinery that you need and you need to start you know, saving money up and putting aside for that. There's lots of different ways that you can help use Profit First to help you to be able to you know, save for those all important growth aspects. Okay, so like we said, we're not gonna be doing this old way of doing things of sales minus expenses equals profit. That's in the past, that's not the way to help your business increase its profit. We're gonna start looking at sales minus profit equals expenses. I want you to get that firmly ingrained in your head because that really is gonna be the game changer for your business. Okay, so third step is removing temptation. So I just wanna make sure that you guys all still awake and with me. So go ahead and type donuts in the chat, bar for, chat box for me. So I know you're probably thinking like, you know, it's like, it's two, um, it's what, nine o'clock Eastern. 
And here I am putting a bunch of donuts on your screen on a Friday in the morning. I apologize for that, but it's okay. We have a reason for doing it because we want to talk about removing that temptation. So when we're putting money into our profit account and our tax account, it's really easy to want to be able to pull money out of that when you think that you need it. So just a reminder, we've got these deposits coming in, hitting into the income account, and then we're putting them into the profit, owner's pay, tax, and operating expenses. But in the book, Mike discovered from his research that people were tempted to spend the money that was in this tax account and this profit account because it was sitting there in their bank account. Again, going back to the cell phone, when you look on your cell phone, you've got all your bank accounts sitting there and you're like, oh, I've got 19,000 in my profit account. Maybe I'll go spend that on whatever. And so Mike then came up with a further step then from these bank accounts. And that was putting into these hold accounts, a profit hold and a tax hold account. So we recommend that you put these into a totally separate bank. Again, call them profit hold, tax hold, no debit card, no online access, uh, and no checkbook. You wanna make this money as difficult as possible to get to because you do not wanna be tempted to spend it, okay? So when you put in that money into your profit account and your tax account, then you're gonna move it from profit to profit hold on your other bank and from tax to tax hold in the bank. So now when you're grabbing your cell phone five times a day and checking your bank balance, you're gonna see profit and tax as zero, and that's okay because you're not gonna be tempted to spend that money on something that is not allocated for. So the fourth step is creating a rhythm. And so in the book, Mike talks about this 1025 habit. So again, from the research, and if you think back to a lot of your bills, they're due either on the 15th or the 30th of the month. And so with the 1025 habit, on the 10th, what you are doing is looking, okay, what deposits have come into my income account from the last time that I did the transfer, which would have been the 25th of the previous month. So from the 26th of that month to today, the 10th of the month, you're then gonna take that income account, balance in that account and then allocate it to those other accounts like we talked about um, previously. Then on the 25th of the month, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna look at your income account, see what the balance is, that if money has hit from the 11th to the 25th, and again, do those proportions and then pay your bills at the same time. So by doing it this way, it really gives you an idea of the peaks and the valleys in your business. You know, maybe you'll see a pattern coming about that, okay, the first and the third month is always, the first week and the third week of the month, we notice that you know, there's a lot of cash coming in, but the second and the fourth week seem to be slow. And when you start seeing those patterns, that can really help you as a business owner to figure out like, okay, what do I need to plan ahead for? Like, I see that this is happening month after month. So what do I need to do different? Now, most of my clients that are on Profit First are actually doing their transfers weekly. So the 1025 habit is a suggestion that Mike makes in the book. But a lot of my clients said, you know what? I need to do this on a Monday. I need to do on a Monday morning, look back to the previous week, look at my income deposits, and then do the, trans the transfers that way. And that's totally fine. That's actually what I do in my business as well. So you have to do something that works for you, because if it doesn't work for you, you're not going to keep doing it. But at the same time, you have to be able to make it have it. One of the huge things that you need to think about with Profit First is that profit needs to be a habit, not an event. Profit shouldn't just be something that happens now and again. It should be a habit that happens every single day in your mind every day of the year. Okay, so those are our different steps to Profit First. And now this is one of the best bits of Profit First. This is something that you know, my clients love. I will be reaching out to my Profit First clients next week to find out what they did with their quarterly profit bonus. So type profit bonus in the chat box for me. You know that any kind of bonus is great. And if you know you are gonna get a quarterly bonus from your business every quarter, then it's going to be such an amazing feeling. So we are at the end of Q2 today. So I will be taking my profit bonus on Monday. I will be taking a look as to what is in my profit account. And I am going to take 50% of that balance in the profit account and pay myself a quarterly bonus. Pretty awesome feeling when that happens. One thing you can also do is if you have a team, you can also give some of that bonus to your team as well. So examples I've seen of other people do it is if you've got, you know, we're just gonna use round numbers, $20,000 in your profit account, you're gonna take $10,000 of that. So I'm taking 50% of that. And that's going to be moved into the um, OPEX account for now for your profit bonus. And then you can take 80% of that for yourself. So you can move 8,000 to your owner's pay account, and then you can draw that off. And then 2,000 then can be split between your teams. So the 20% left 
then goes to your team. Be sure that it goes through payroll though. Tax bonuses are still taxable. So make sure that if you are paying a team a bonus with that, that you put it through the payroll. I always run an off-cycle payroll for my team because I like them to get uh, you know, another paycheck that's outside of their regular uh, paycheck that they get every two weeks. But how would that feel to be able to pay yourself a bonus every three months? I tell you, it's, it's awesome. We just um, renovated our house uh, over the last couple of years. And my profit bonus was a huge part of you know, doing those things, uh, doing those renovations and paying upfront, not putting it on the credit card, just paying for them. It is such a great feeling. I know a lot of other people um, you know, in our Profit First Professionals group, people always share what they're doing because Mike's asking, hey, what are you guys spending your profit bonus on? People are you know, paying off mortgages. They're going on you know, amazing vacations. They're saving it. They're sending their kids to college. And it's just really awesome hearing those stories. And then what's been really great as well is hearing the stories of our clients and advocates that have been using Profit First. For example, my client Dylan, uh, we got to the end of his first quarter and uh, actually maybe his second quarter, he had like $10,000 in his profit account. And I'm like, hey, Dylan, like, you know, what did you do with your Profit First bonus? And he's like, yeah, I, I didn't take it. And I'm like, what? what? What do you mean you didn't take it? Is what well, you know, it's you know, it's my, it's my first time, and you know, I'm not used to taking a bonus, and I, I just thought I'd leave it in the business. So I said, well, what would you do with the five thousand dollar profit bonus if you got it? And he said, well, I do have six thousand dollars in personal credit card debt. So I just looked at him. We we're on a Zoom call, I guess, and I said, like, well, you could pay five thousand dollars off on that credit card. And the look on his face was like, oh my gosh, I never thought about that. And so that's what he did. Sarah, another client of mine, uh, she has been you know, saving up her profit and she got a call this week um, from a friend of hers who won $31,000 worth of tools in a raffle. And so he took the tools that he wanted and then he said, hey, this is what I have left. Would you like this for $10,000? Uh, and Sarah was like, absolutely. Paid him there right there and then. She didn't have to put it on her credit card. She was able to pay him the $10,000 and got all these brand new tools. She sent me a Voxer message after she had done this. And she's like, Carrie, I just have to tell you, you're not going to believe what I just did. And so she tells me the story. And she's like, Carrie, if it wasn't for Profit First, I would never have been able to do this. She goes, I would have had to have said no to him. But because she had Profit First in place, because she had the money there, and the, yes, the profit should have gone to her personally, but she had such an opportunity to get all these brand new tools. And it was $21,000 worth of tools for $10,000. And she was like, you know, I did this. I hope it's okay. And it's like, in that situation, absolutely. That makes sense. Now I will be talking to her next week saying, hey, you really should have taken some of that for yourself. But I could see her logic there that she was able to invest in equipment that she was going to need anyway. And it made perfect sense. But she didn't have to put it on credit card. That's the key point that I want to get you, want you to take away from that. So celebrate when you get your, your quarterly profit bonus. It is something to, you know, it's a pat on the back to yourself. It's a, hey, a good job you're doing something right. So I do want to mention debt why we are you know, in this as well, because that is something that you know, people ask about as well. So debt is something that is, some people hate it. Some people see it as a way to you know, leverage you know, different aspects of their business. But debt can also be a very stressful aspect. And it can be something that keeps you awake at night. And it's one of those things like, you know, okay, if you have debt, do you have a plan to get out of it? You know, don't get debt just because it's something that you want. Make sure it's something that you actually need for the business. You know, what's that return going to be? How is that going to increase, help you to increase your revenue? For example, if you're in construction and you need to get another truck, are you getting another truck because you feel like it, because you like the color, because it's on a special offer, or are you getting it because it will enable you to put another crew out on, in the field that will enable then you to increase your revenue? So make sure that if you're looking at you know, taking on debt, how is it going to help you grow your business? How is it going to help you increase your revenue? Don't just do something because of you know, being a, you know, a shiny object and you think it'll be really cool to have it. Also, one of the things is why you can do with Profit First using the advanced methods, which we talk more about in our program, is you know, having different vault accounts to help you to start saving for those purchases down the road as well. So that's a really exciting way of helping Profit First to work for you as well. So sales minus profit equals expenses. That is the new formula that you need to have in your head. And that will help you to then take your profit first and help it grow to the next business. Okay, so do we have any questions, Kelly? Sure. So Martin was asking a question about the 10 and 25 rule, if that's new. 
so no that is in the book um that mike put in um it's something that uh, so yes that's in the book that mike uh when, you know, when he wrote it um it's something that again it's nothing in profit first is set in stone you know you have to make it work for you but you just still got to make sure you're following those you know the basic principles so you know i did have one client initially who was doing it daily and i'm like nope don't be doing it daily like that doesn't give you any idea as to how profit first is really helping you um but yeah absolutely you know there is that's something that you know has that flexibility does that answer your question oh uh, yeah thank you okay so okay any other questions before we move on nope so far that was the only one okay thanks kelly okay so Right now, I just gave you a whole lot of information. Probably hope you know, you're thinking now like, okay, how am I gonna do this? What do I need to do? And so this is where I wanna be able to help you with this. When, you come, when it comes to Profit First, you're gonna have more success if you're being held accountable. If you've got someone holding your hand, walking you through and guiding you and encouraging you. And so going alone can make it really difficult. So don't go it alone. We want you to succeed in your Profit First journey. So my three intentions today were to show you that you can be profitable. Even if you just opened your business you know, two days ago, you can still be profitable from day one. To show you that having different bank accounts helps you to have control of your cash. And to show you that you can save for taxes and not stress out again by a tax bill. So who feels that they have received at least one of those today? Awesome. Okay. So again, accountability is going to be the key. So it's Friday morning. You're going to sign up from this uh, call in a few minutes and your energy is going to start to flatline because you're super excited right now. And now you're starting to think about everything you have to get done before 5 p.m. Uh, today and before your weekend starts. And this is where people get stuck. They want to take their profit first, but they just don't know where, where to start. And it can be very overwhelming when you're reading through a book and all these different things, trying to figure out how to do that. But you have to ask yourself, are you serious by, about increasing your profitability in your business? Is this something that you really want to make a priority in your business? And I want you to think about to when you started your business. You know, again, you started it to be profitable. How about the quarterly profit bonus we just talked about? I mean, that is pretty amazing. I know Kelly's going to be taking her profit bonus on Monday as well. And it's just such an amazing feeling when you get to do that. And if you'd like to make a profit and have money saved for your taxes as well, again, taxes are a good thing. Taxes are not bad. So if you answered yes to these questions, then I have an opportunity for you. So just one other thing from our client here, Sarah, she said that she loves profit first now because she's able to pay her vendors on time and she has money saved for taxes. Sarah actually has an interesting position because she actually has way more money paid saved for taxes than she actually needs. So we're working with her CPA to adjust that. And again, those percentages don't you know, always fit for every single person. So we're going to adjust hers accordingly. Um, but what a great position to have too much money in your tax account. She's not going to be searching for money at the end of 23 when she does her taxes. So here is your uh, next step. And this is your personal invitation to join our Profit Maker Fast Track. And so this is a custom program we have created that follows the Profit First method. And this is for you if you want to increase your profit, if you want to take your business to the next level, if you want to be in control of your cash flow, and if you want to take your profit first and grow your business. So in the profit first maker, sorry, profit maker fast track. So we have 12 weeks of bi-weekly coaching Zoom calls, and that's where we're going to walk you through profit first. So, so this was just scratching the surface on this webinar today. This was giving you kind of the foundation. Um, but now we're going to start looking, you know, digging deeper into that and what that means. You're going to get step-by-step -step guidance to increase your profitability. So we're going to start digging into your numbers and see what's going on. And I always say to my clients as well, I may sometimes ask the hard questions. And that's because when you're in your business, you're, you know, you're on grand zero, you know, you see everything is going on, everything's happening right in front of you. And you don't always get the same perspective as we do if we're at 10,000 feet looking into your business and able to ask those questions. So we're asking you know, different ways of you know, asking you things to help you really think about you know, those expenses, you know, what's going on, you know, how you're earning your revenue and so forth. You'll also get a free copy of Profit First as well. And then we do a full Profit First assessment and a custom rollout plan. So if you think back to those percentages in that table earlier on, 
if I ask you today, hey, go put 15% into your tax account right away, you're going to look at me and say, Carrie, uh, no, can't do that. And we totally get that. So we don't ask any client to start putting in those percentages as what they should be on day one. We create a custom rollout plan and we help you over 18 months to you know, see where your percentages should be at and work up to that because we want you to succeed. And if we tell you to put 15% in from day one, it's not going to happen. Accountability, that's going to be the key to the, your profit first success. So we are here to support you. you know, we use Voxer. So if you have a question throughout the month, then we're here to help you answer your questions and make sure that you're really getting the most out of Profit First because we want you to succeed and we want to be there to support you and make sure that it all makes sense. And then you also get the Profit Maker Fast Track Workbook as well. So that's going to help you to work through. There is homework, but that's okay because I want you to be really understanding your numbers and digging into them. So you've probably gathered that the accountability aspect is priceless because it's as with anything in life, if nobody's there holding you accountable, someone there to support you, hold your hand, answer the questions, it's really easy just to go back to doing things the way you were doing. And then I'm sure after hearing about what Profit First can do in your business, you don't want to keep doing the same old thing. You want to start doing something really different, something differently. And so for our Profit Maker Fast Track, it is a one-time investment of $3,000. And that gives you everything that we just talked about, you know, with the calls and the Profit First Assessment and the rollout plan and the support there to help you to take your profit first, to be a success. And that when you get to the end of September, you can be taking that quarterly profit bonus as well. It might only be $100, but you know what? It's $100 more than you're taking at the end of this quarter. We are only, only opening up five spaces uh, at this time for the Profit Maker Fast Trap. This is something that I work personally with, uh, with our clients. And so there are only five spaces available. And like I said, it's just a $3,000 investment. Uh, I do understand that that sometimes is um, you know, a lot for new businesses if they're newer. And so we're also offering a payment plan the way you can do three monthly payments of $1,100 or you can do a pay in full price of $3,000. So we'll start as soon as you are ready. I am asking that we get started before September 1st, so we can start on September 1st, um, but we do need to get started because we want to make sure we're getting that you know, system in place as soon as possible, halfway through the year. So let's get, you know, start saving some money for taxes so that when end of 23 comes and your tax professional is doing your taxes, you'll know that you have some money saved for that already. So like I said, there are only five spots. Uh, once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not sure when we're going to be opening that up again. It may be later this year. It may not be until next year. Uh, so if you are ready to take your profit first, here is a QR code on screen. You can scan that. That'll take you to our website. And it's Construction Profit First. It's the website. Uh, we work with a lot of construction companies, but we also work with other businesses as well. So go ahead and scan that QR code and get your information over to us and we'll set up a time that we can jump on a Zoom with you and chat to make sure that this is going to be a good fit. Uh, there's no commitment from you know, doing that sign up with the QR code that just gets you into our system so we can start having a conversation with you. So are there any other questions? There are not questions, but if somebody's on their phone and they can't scan that code, is there how else would they get a hold of you to schedule an appointment? Uh, we, if you can uh, go to our website, constructionprofitfirst.com, then the, go to the contact page and send a form there. Okay. I will drop that link in the chat. Okay. Martin, I see you raised your hand. Do you want to unmute yourself? Did you have uh, Martin question? raised his hand when he had the question okay. about the 10 and 25. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, right, sorry, I'm just going through all the questions I've got. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> okay, so just while we're waiting for you know, Martin to see if he's got any questions. So I hope you can see how Profit First can really help your business grow. It is such, like I said, it is a game changer. Working with our clients over the last year and just seeing the changes that they have made in their business is really just the most amazing feeling uh, and seeing people having enough money to pay for their tax bill. Uh, all our clients had money in their tax account to pay for their 2022 taxes. Not one person had to go and dig through personal savings, personal checking accounts, looking for that money or go on a payment plan. Everybody had enough money in their tax account. So it really is the most amazing feeling. And like I said, you know, Kelly and I are taking our profit first bonuses on Monday. 
and you know in three months time you can be in that same space as well so martin did you have any questions uh yeah so like is most of the content sort of on zoom as well or is it well yes everything's on zoom okay perfect yeah cool thank you <laughs> okay and if you have any other questions then like i said you can uh you know submit the form and we can jump on a zoom call uh, and go through any questions you may have uh you know otherwise uh i hope uh, you enjoy this i hope this was a lot of great information and i look forward to having the opportunity to working with some of you in the future thank you so much for joining us today we'll be back again at the end of july on the last friday of the month with our next uh, profit buzz webinar as well thanks so much oh sophie when do you need to know bye so uh, if you want to uh, do if you're interested then i would suggest uh, scanning that qr code i can put it back on the screen for you and then uh, send us your information in and then that way um, we can at least you know start a conversation with you um, and then you know there's no pressure to have to decide right away like I said I'd like you to get started by September 1st but at least fill in that form that way I've got a way to get in touch with you um, and then we can jump on a zoom call you know, when you feel ready okay if nobody has any other questions did everybody get the QR code that wanted to scan it if not, again, just go to constructionprofitfirst.com to the contact page. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was uh, great having you here. I enjoyed sharing about Profit First, and I hope you have a great weekend. Bye.